Natalie Portman is an Academy Award-winning actress, director, author, and activist. She has been nominated for the Golden Globes, Screen Actors Guild Award, BAFTA Award, and has won the Critics' Choice Award. In addition to her film work, she devotes her time to several humanitarian causes with an emphasis on supporting women and girls. She is also the co-founder of Angel City Football Club, a Los Angeles-based professional national women's soccer league team. Please join me in welcoming her to the stage. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, and friends, it is an honor for me to address you on a topic close to my heart, the achievements of the first phase of the Spotlight Initiative in the global effort to end violence against women and girls. When I was 25, I traveled to Uganda. There, I met a woman, Fatima, who started her own business cooking food at a stall in the market. She had three children and her own home. When I asked her what the best part of having her business was, she answered me that it was the ability to throw out her abusive husband because she was financially independent. Fatima's freedom from violence afforded to her by economic independence allowed every other area of her life to thrive. I had never before realized the interconnectedness of economic empowerment and physical safety, but I quickly understood this was not the case only for Fatima, but for women globally. A decade later, the shockwaves of the courageous testimonies of women in my own industry entertainment, inspired by Tarana Burke's Me Too movement, first among them my sister Ashley Judd, who I'm humbled to be here with today, brought the ubiquity of sexual violence closer to home. This time I learned sexual violence not only affected survivors' physical and mental well-being, but also their ability to participate in their profession. I was exposed to the brutal psychological, legal, and economic ramifications of these horrific acts of violence. And as many of us in the entertainment industry gathered with women in other industries to share experiences and search for solutions, we found that the same patterns of violence existed for farm workers, restaurant workers, healthcare workers, journalists, women in tech, and on and on. As we struggled among ourselves to learn how to create structures that would prevent future abuse as well as serve the survivors of abuse, the only thing that was clear was that no single input would be helpful, but rather several were needed at once. And that is why the Spotlight Initiative's approach has such resonance to me, because they have a comprehensive model that seeks to address the multitude of causes and effects of violence on women and girls. The Spotlight Initiative, launched in 2017, has been a beacon of hope for survivors around the globe. Its unwavering commitment to eradicating violence, ending harmful practices, and ensuring access to justice and support services is unprecedented. This groundbreaking initiative has brought together governments, civil society organizations, and communities to address the root causes of violence against women and girls. Since 2019, Spotlight Initiative's investments ensured that the conviction rate for perpetrators of gender-based violence doubled across 12 countries. Almost 500 laws and policies were signed to end violence against women and girls. 190 million US dollars was allocated to civil society organizations. National budgets to address gender-based violence increased tenfold across 14 countries, and 2.5 million women and girls have accessed gender-based violence services. By providing access to comprehensive support services, it ensures that survivors are not only heard, but also guided toward healing and rebuilding their lives. Spotlight Initiative's comprehensive model could lead to the effective prevention of violence for 21 million women and girls by 2025, according to Dahlberg. By tackling the deep-seated gender inequalities that perpetuate violence, Spotlight seeks to change cultural norms and attitudes that condone such behavior. Through continued prevention efforts, one million more girls would stay in school by 2025. As one of my favorite writers, Rebecca Solnit, put it so well in her book, Men Explain Things to Me, we tend to treat violence and the abuse of power as though they fit into airtight categories, harassment, intimidation, threat, battery, rape, murder. But we need to address the slippery slope rather than compartmentalizing the varieties of misogyny and dealing with each separately. A man acts on the belief that you have no right to speak and that you don't get the right to define what's going on. That could mean just cutting you off at the dinner table or the conference. It could also mean telling you to shut up or threatening you if you open your mouth or beating you for speaking or killing you to silence you forever. 
The overwhelming levels of violence against women and girls is as much a threat to our voices as it is to our lives. Humanity is losing out on the full expression of half its citizens as those citizens are being deprived of their essential human rights. The achievements of the Spotlight Initiative serve as a testament that although we still have enormous work to do, our collective determination to eliminate violence against women and girls can make meaningful impact. Echoing the words of the Deputy Secretary General, I encourage every country here to develop a national plan to end violence against women and girls based on the Spotlight Initiative's comprehensive model. Every country should have adequately funded budgets dedicated to ending violence against women and girls and to create an environment where survivors feel supported and perpetrators are held accountable. And I urge UN member states to reinvest in the Spotlight Initiative and its comprehensive model. Let us continue to amplify the voices of survivors, advocate for justice, and stand against the injustices faced by women and girls worldwide. Together, we can build a future where violence against women and girls becomes a dark chapter in history and where their rights are respected, their voices realized. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalie, for your powerful words and vision and for reinforcing the importance of a comprehensive model by a startling example of the linkages, for example, between economic empowerment and physical safety. And we know we can draw those correlations in health and education and so on. 